in this one, and so is Jordan. Oh, Jeff, Jeff, what did you say? All babies look the same. Some look worse than others. I had an ugly baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> My, my daughter looked beautiful. My son looked like a grumpy old German. <laughs> Leo had a picture of his son, mm -hmm. who is now a really good-looking human. Would you like me to do an imitation yeah. of... What's your son's name? Ethan. Okay, this is this is the picture that everybody secretly in the newsroom made fun of. This was Ethan. Oh. I know, but it's fine. The, the, this is Ethan. <laughs> Roll the open. <laughs> Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Different. You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Look at our beautiful audience. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Jason Show. How you doing, audience? How y'all doing? You doing good? I'm glad you're here. I almost fell coming out. I, I live for the first time, and I just almost tripped, right, coming out a little wire. Wouldn't that have been awesome? That would have been great. It would have been, uh, yeah. Oh, the audience isn't clapping. They care about me. I appreciate that. Yeah. I know. I know. Let's start with this. Uh, our, our buddy Kendall continues to be on her maternity leave. And I told her, I said, you got to keep sending us pictures. We want to see the baby. <laughs> so uh, Kai dressed up as a little lion for, uh, for <laughs> Halloween. Look at this. There's Kendall. I think a little kitty. Or is she a little, uh, she's a lion too. And then uh, her husband Jordan is a tiger. And then uh, look at little Kai Phoenix. <laughs> so cute. I think we have one more. Look. Look, okay, Aww. isn't that the most precious picture? Yes. It's so, I was, at, I was at a salad bar yesterday and a woman, a woman came up to me. She says, I haven't watched TV in three months. Has she given birth yet? <laughs> I said, yes, yes, ma'am, she has. And can I get more croutons, please? Like, we're out of croutons. Anyway, Kendall, we love you. Leo, roll the music. Let's start the show. Shaking my head like that. Yeah. Filling in for Kendall audience, give it up for Fallon, everybody. Oh my goodness. How you doing? Good. How oh, are you? I am you too old fell. to be shaking my head like that. I don't know. Out? I almost blacked out there for a oh, second. Oh gosh. Yeah. Anyway, how you doing? Good. We need some water for Jason. I know. Can we get some water <laughs> up in here? Anyway. Um, I thought of you. Oh. I thought of you last night. At I the salad do. buffet? I thought of you at the salad bar <laughs> okay, last night. Yeah. I thought of you yesterday because you and I both have one of these. You, you know, remember during the pandemic when we couldn't leave our house and uh, all of us bought Pelotons? Uh, mm. we've ever, you know, the, the audience knows where I'm going with this. <laughs> Eight million of us bought we Pelotons. Mm -hmm. And then about six months later, they became the world's most expensive coat hanger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so mine, mine is in our room. I bought one during the pandemic. I used it maybe for six months and then I stopped and then I would go occasionally back to it and then I stopped yeah well uh, yeah and, and now I've been looking at it and I get that damn bill every month and it makes me mad yeah. I'm like I, I'm paying for this stupid thing yeah then I get angry at not Peloton I get mad at myself yep yep you have one mm -hmm. but you actually use it don't you um, I use it like in the winter months. Summer, I don't really get on it, but like I just did like 100 miles this ma past month. Oh, yeah. great. Congratulations. So, yeah. yeah. So, Thanks for bragging. Yeah. New month, incorporating some strength into it this month. So, yeah, I mean, I guess you could say I'm a little bit better than you with mine. 
Whatever. I know Whatever. she didn't. Someone you know. yelled. Someone goes, I know she didn't. Yeah. It's my favorite. No, but I, the problem is I have it in my room on carpet, and I have, like, plywood under it. I have a mat. Yeah. But it's still a little wobbly, and that makes me not want to oh. get on it. Okay, that's fair. I, if I had a treadmill, it would, like, yeah, I would never. I'm not a treadmill person. I am, though. Yes, yeah, see, and that would be good for you. A lot of people got the bike. Think They would message me, like, should I get it? I'm like, I don't know. Have you ever taken a spin class? If not, take a free one somewhere locally to like see if you even like spin before buying a five thousand whatever it is. Whatever, it however, like, I forgot. I don't think it's five thousand. I, I think blocked I made that out fancy. how expensive yeah. it was. Yeah. I really did, but yeah. I don't know. I, I oh, I'm more of a treadmill guy. I'm yeah. like a little gay gerbil on a, on, a, on a treadmill. I'm just like <laughs> I love a treadmill, but I just imagine the water bottle this size. That's right. Col <laughs> Colin does. <laughs> Colin hangs a little, uh, oh, but nice. it's not water. It's vodka. Oh, he just okay. hangs it. <laughs> A little salt lick. Yeah. Oh my God. Anyway, but I did it. I love Ben. Ben's my favorite instructor. He's British. Mm. I did a little 20 minute 90s dance one. And yesterday? Yesterday. I went back oh, on it. I, that's the more, that's the end of the story. I got back on the horse and oh I got back on it. Because I run during, the, I jog during the spring and summer, but. Okay, Ben is cute. But here's my one. I liken Ben to like Hugh Grant, like the British kind of guy that's like, oh, I'm quirky. No, oh, you know what I mean? Like, so he kind of drives me crazy. That's the thing with Peloton. You find like the instructors you like. So Ben, I was always like, oh, we get it. Well, I'm an awkward British guy. You know, um, I just, I didn't love. Let's but be clear. I'm not listening to Ben. Oh. I'm, I, I'm just looking at Ben. I don't care what he says. That I, is different. Yeah. That is, you're right. That's my bad. I don't, don't listen yeah. to them. Volume off. Really, okay. Madonna up, volume down. There we go. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hotness. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Roll it. I'm loving the calls from the audience today. I know. They're wolf whistling. They're making animal noises. I'm, I'm loving it. I like that they called me out. They That's called you I'm out? I'm yeah. That. Yeah. First up, they make up some of the most successful movies of all time, but the future of Marvel movies may be in doubt. I know that sounds dramatic, but let me explain. Check out this headline, everybody, of a new article in Variety. This ain't no trash magazine. This is Variety. Crisis at Marvel. And it looks into the problems, the multiple problems, facing Marvel, including too many movie and TV projects. I'll I have an opinion on that. Reshoots involving the next movie, The Marvels, and the domestic violence charges against Jonathan Majors, who plays the new big villain. Well, things are so bad. This is not a joke. Things are so bad at the House of Marvel. There is a push to bring back the original Avengers to help stabilize the franchise. That includes Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Black Widow, and more. The only problem is, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, I don't need an email today. Um, <laughs> really, not today. Iron Man and Black Widow Oh. Yeah. And of course, they could come back as a part of a multiverse here. Let me just break this down. Here's what I think, because I'm a, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. I, I love this franchise, but I have fatigue. I think a lot of us have fatigue because yeah. it's too much. It was. It was too much because you've now, the audience feels like in order to watch the 19th movie, you need to watch movies one through 18. Oh, that's exactly where I am. I watched the first few and then I felt like didn't see a couple and then I was like, okay, now I just, I have fallen off and I didn't go see any of the new ones or spin Because you feel that it's like homework. It was too much, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's your acts, Marvel. And they're like three hours long. They're three hours long. <laughs> Marvel, I'm joking, but I'm not joking. You're asking way too much of the audience. Yeah. You're asking, I shouldn't, and then you got Disney Plus releasing shows, so now I have to watch 18 movies <laughs> and 12 shows no. in order to understand your new movie. It's you're asking yeah. when 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 we're in an area, we're in a in a situation where we barely want to leave our house to go to the theaters. You're asking for a lot, yeah. so trim it down, trim it down a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Great. Fixing that tie there. Next up. Next up, the Mean Girls are back. Cast members from the movie reunited for a new Wally World, a new Walmart holiday commercial. I haven't seen this yet. Let's look at it. Karen Smith here with the weather. There's a 30% chance it's already Wednesday. This wasn't regular shopping. This was deal shopping. Back to you, Tuck. Don't let the haters stop you from doing your thing, Kevin Jr. Even as the guidance counselor, I was still getting schooled. Gruel. Huh? 
What's gruel? Oh, it's nothing. Man, I don't have to sex some. Oh, this is gonna be so like fetch. fetch. Stop trying to make fetch happen, Mom. It's still not gonna happen. We were a school obsessed. <laughs> Ladies. You take that one and you take that one. I am such a good mom. I'm impressed. And I'm Karen. We know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Well done, Wally World. <laughs> well done. It was so good. I loved the whole thing. I do too. Lindsay's back. Amanda, Lacey. Lacey took a break from the Hallmark movies. <laughs> uh, they're all back at North Shore High School this time as the adults. Uh, as you can tell, Rachel McAdams was like, no thanks, Walmart. Pass. No thanks. Yeah, we'll I'm pass. Good. Yeah. Also, Janice Ian, you know, the girl who played her, and I, I liked her character a lot. But I was glad to see the sprinkling in of a few of them, like Damien. Sometimes those big Super Bowl or holiday commercials, when they use clap, can go wrong or they're not real Agreed. fresh or original. That's really good. Yeah, they did a great job. I loved it. Is the, it but it is the season. Here we are. We, I mean, it is, it is the Christmas creep. I mean, it really is. We are now. They. It, 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 it's three weeks from Thanksgiving, but Santa and Rudolph has bulldozed the, the pilgrims. Oh. I mean, it's like we are, it's Christmas now for like two months. You I know? just booked all of my daughter's Santa pictures today. <laughs> I did. This. Is that what you were doing yes. during our meeting? Yes, I was Great. booking Santa pictures. I saw a meme yesterday that said, I celebrate Christmas from November 1st through the 23rd, Thanksgiving on the 24th, and then Christmas again through the end of the yes. year. I was like, yeah, that's kind of fair. That's what we do. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. We have a lot more to come. We'll be back after this. Stay with us, everybody. Back in a moment. Well, today is the second day of November. Oh. Okay, I know. <laughs> or if you're watching us from Orlando, you get us a day late. It's the third. Anyway. <laughs> uh, and the new month seemed to surprise a lot of newscasters. That's why I try never to say this, because <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel will get a hold of it, and we'll do this to it in the Late Night Rewind. <laughs> It's already November. Can you believe that? Already November. It's already November. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Already November 1st. November 1st. Can you believe yes. it's already November 1st? Yes. November 1st. Can you believe it? 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 November 1st. Yeah. Hard to believe. November 1st. Hard to believe. Hard to believe that it is already November. Hard to believe it's already November. Hard to believe we are in November. November. Can you believe it already? Can you believe it's November oh. already? Can you believe it's November already? Can you believe it's November already? I can't believe it, Adam. It's crazy Isn't that how crazy? fast this year is going wow. by. Already November. Already. That's great. <laughs> we're just, okay, we're just we trying to get on piece. Kimmel. <laughs> she got on Kimmel. <laughs> That's why the happy chat, I, I, I do have sympathy for the news anchors mm -hmm. having been one. That They call it happy chat. Like, oh. They come out of the open. It's like, good morning, Baltimore. And then you have to <laughs> chat with someone that you hope you like. Oh. You know what I mean? And it's like, hi, Victoria. It's all fake. And you know what I yeah. mean? And so you got to come up with something to say. Yep. And yeah. And Radio is so different. It's like, here's why my day is already horrible. <laughs> That's how I start my show on Me radio. Me too. Yeah. I start mine with that. <laughs> it's so different. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Sticking with Late Night Friends, Stephen Colbert introduced the latest Late Night host on his Late Night show. Comedian Taylor Tomlinson will host After Midnight. Many of you know her from, well, she has a hugely popular uh, series of Netflix specials. After Midnight replaces James Corden and is similar to the internet-themed game show At Midnight, which some of you will remember ran on Comedy Central. The weird part about it is that show actually ran after Colbert's old show, The Colbert Report. <laughs> Tomlinson appeared with Steven last night. Look at this. I want to show them this photo. Last night after the show, I called you to tell you I had the job. And I also told you the best part of having one of these jobs is being able to find and hire really good people. And this is the moment that I told you that you had the job. 
I just, I want to have like a co caption contest. What is going through her mind? What is she reacting oh, to? Oh man, when you log onto the Zoom and realize you should have dried your hair and put on more makeup <laughs> is what's actually happening. Well, I didn't know if I got the job. I thought they were calling to let me down easy. So I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So to me, this is the face of like, you know when you think you're going to get dumped, but they propose instead? <laughs> Is an executive producer. He's the executive producer of After Midnight. The new show is going to debut on CBS early next year. You had the exact same thought that I had being a TV nerd, and that is? I, I hope she does well. For some reason, women have struggled in the late night positions, and I don't know why, but I do like that they're doing a game instead of another talk show, so maybe that will be helpful because she is really talented, and so have the previous women. They have been very talented. Chelsea so. has been great. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, she was probably the most successful with yeah. late night Chelsea Handler but yeah the, the first was you got to give credit where credit's due Joan Rivers I mean mm -hmm. Joan you know Joan right yeah Joan filled in for Johnny was enormously successful then got her own show here on Fox that did not go well uh, but uh, yeah she was great I mean mm -hmm. there were times when Joan filling in for Johnny garnered better ratings than Johnny oh, wow. yeah uh, and Johnny took a lot of days off so <laughs> I was just gonna say yeah next up celebrity spotting in Los Angeles one street journalist is telling all uh, about where exactly to find them what do I mean well we're gonna find out joining us live with more is the host of the Hollywood Raw podcast our favorite celebrity it's Dax Holt Hi, Hello. buddy. Hello. Gang, listen to your audience today. I'm very impressed with the class. I know. This, Good audience. This audience is fantastic today. They are on fire. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love it. Dax, one woman gave me fried chicken candy already. I don't even know. Yeah. We're going to try that later. Anyway, <laughs> uh, who are you guys talking to this week on the pod? Yeah, so we had a buddy of ours, Joe Andalaro, on. He used to work with us at TMZ for many, many years. Uh, was a street journalist and cameraman for the company, running around the streets, getting all the big celebrities. Uh, but he is now doing his own thing. He's got the, a very, very successful TikTok page and Instagram page. It's called The Joy of Everything, where he like live streams outside of popular areas in LA, like Craig's. And he'll be out there and he'll live stream all the mayhem and craziness, celebs showing up, leaving. And so, it's become so popular because people feel like they are there, that they are one of the camera people out there and they get to see the celebrities walking in to these restaurants and these hot spots in LA. So it was really fun to talk to him and why he's had so much success post TMZ, but also like, the number one question I get when people come to LA is like, where can I go? Cause I want to see a celebrity. Like where can I go? And so I asked him, he knows more than me at this point where to go. And so obviously Craig's is the number one spot. If you want to see someone, uh, because that's where they want to be seen. But then he started to list off other spots that, uh, he would recommend people going to, so you could uh, see a celebrity yourself, but he was just full of so many good stories through over the years. He talked about one time when Caitlyn Jenner hit, her, hit him with her purse. He talked about covering Suzanne Summers, um, which I love because all he had the most incredible stories with Suzanne Summers. She was always the kindest, most like loving celebrity out there. So he kind of got into his personal stories about Suzanne over the years. Uh, and by the way, look at you in a tank top in that clip over there. Look at you. We just had a woman in the second row faint. Seriously, Dax. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I missed what it was. Though. <laughs> no, your tank top. I was I was saying, look at you in your tank top in the clip. Anyway, right there. There you are. Look at Dax. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Dax. Oh, and by the way, great Dax was to me a winner on Halloween. Your Captain Jack Sparrow costume was like fantastic, it. Dax. <laughs> uh, thank you. It was. I, uh, did your kids love it? Kids loved it. I had to sit and have my wife uh, do all of my makeup. The hardest part I'd never realized, and I give women a lot of credit now. That eyeliner. Holy moly, my eyes were watering. I couldn't stop blinking. Like half the day, my, I, my eyes were going crazy. And I was like, wow, putting this on every morning, I give massive credit to people for doing this. <laughs> That's my buddy. Give it up for Dax, everybody. <laughs> Subscribe to the Hollywood Raw podcast wherever you get podcasts. Thank you, buddy. Look, Dax. 
I've tried a couple times. It is hard. It is not. It isn't easy. Don't get in close. You'll see how it's, my hands are shaky. You know? Yeah. Oh, what are we doing? No. <laughs> Leo, go in closer. No. I'm just joking. No. See those pores. It's uh, more just for you now. It's a story not many of us knew about until right now. Daniel Radcliffe's stunt double from the Harry Potter movies became paralyzed after an onset accident while filming the final movie. Well, now Daniel is helping tell his story in a new documentary. Look at this trailer. I remember straight after breaking my neck, I said, there's no chance of coming back. Worst day in the film business that I've ever read. <sighs> it is unfair. He shouldn't have had to do any of that. In my mind, Dave's indestructible. This terrible thing happened to Dave, but I don't want to talk as if his life is a tragedy. The way his life has affected the lives of people around him means that it is the furthest thing from that imaginable. Three, two, one, Salad. Before my accident, everything was about being cool and being a stuntman. Now it's about being present. I have so much love in my life. It's great. So, so it's called David Holmes, The Boy Who Lived, and it looks at his life after the accident. And as you can see, the impact he's had on everyone around him, including Daniel. Daniel, I believe, directed this, mm. Daniel Radcliffe, and it comes out in November, November uh, 15th on HBO and then Max as well. I, I'm a Harry Potter fan. I had no idea. I don't remember this story. No, I don't remember that at all, actually. No. So that's so, I mean, it's horrible. That's really To have that dream. And then, because that's all he wanted to do as a kid was to be a stunt double, mm. uh, all, a stunt man, all the time. Then to do it and have that accident, and then to have Daniel be such a great friend yep. uh, to him, and they're like legit, legit friends. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I can't wait to watch it. Next up, Melissa McCarthy is back with a new holiday movie. This time, she's playing a genie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love her. Uh, she's playing a genie, a genie, like in the lamp, I guess. Okay. Um, in a movie. From the writer of Love Actually. I haven't seen this yet. Let's look at this. If you're an actual genie, it explains the whole three wishes thing. Fairy tale stuff. Real genies, unlimited wishes. I wish I had large pizza, pepperoni, extra cheese. This is just a triangle of red bread. Go and try it. Wait an ever loving minute. This is heaven. It's the most. This place is big. You've obviously been inside that box slightly longer than you think. How long are we talking about? Look what I found. Two thousand years. What do you call it? Oh, sanitizer. Sanitizer. Mmm, zesty. <laughs> Not bad. Not too good. Not too good. So McCarthy's genie helps a guy reunite with his wife and children during the holiday season. It's going to be on Peacock November 22nd. Oh, I'll love it. All right. The lower the rating score on a movie, the more I like it usually. Yeah. 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 It's true. So, yeah. If it has like a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, you're in. 100% for me. 100% for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So never trust my recommendations <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> I love Melissa McCarthy. Me too. I, mean, I love like, one, everything she does. I, this has been a good year for her. I loved her as Ursula in The yep. Little Mermaid live action. Again, we don't need every Disney movie made into a live action, but that one I love. And she say, was, tell that to Disney. I know. <laughs> I have a couple things to say oh, to Disney. Okay, but okay. yeah, anyway. Yeah, Club 33. Anyway, let's get to know our next JVIP of the week. Today, it's our first first viewer from Washington to ever win. That's right. It's Elaine. Elaine Thomas from Olympia, Washington. Elaine sent us a Christmas card last year and loved getting one back from us. Aww. We'll explain about that a little bit later. She says, we always make uh, Washington State feel like it's part of the show. Elaine loves that we're honest with our comments and thanks uh, for coming to her TV every day. Well, Elaine's going to get a Jason Show mug from season nine and enter to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience. Sorry, we don't have airfare. A $150 <laughs> gift card to Becker Furniture. We love Becker Furniture. And a $250 gift certificate to Renew Med Spa. That's right. Thank you, Washington. We do love you. We're going to take a break. Do not turn that dial or we'll be mad. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Are the friendly skies still friendly? Coming up in just a little bit, Thrifty Traveler returns with the hottest travel deals of the year. And can you really save money on booking flights if you book them on a certain day? 
he'll tell you. And then, what happens when photographer Eric brings home a bear? That and more when The Jason Show continues. Welcome back, friends. Thanksgiving. Can you believe this? Now, now, now I'm going to make Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, can you believe Thanksgiving is three weeks away? Which uh, What? Which means Christmas is right around the corner. Time could be running out. Why am I saying this? Because time could be running out to get that holiday flight that won't cost you a small fortune. Joining me to talk holiday travel, flight deals, and Delta is our friend Jared from Thrifty Traveler. Good to see you, Jason. How you doing? Great. We'll get to Delta a little bit later, but uh, let me just get right to it. We're sitting here on the perch of Thanksgiving, three weeks away. People are watching. Is it too late for them to get a good flight? Thanksgiving, it's probably too late. Really? Christmas, you need to start thinking about booking like right now because things are, as the closer you get with flights and especially with holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas, the closer you get, the more expensive those flights are gonna be. Is, is the whole week, and I, this is a very general question, but let me, before we go to Christmas specifically, because first comes Thanksgiving, it is too late. Is that whole week expensive, Jared? Is that whole, like, would you save even maybe a little bit if you go out on Monday if you can, or is it just everything is gonna be expensive? No, this is the key for Thanksgiving and Christmas. If you can arrive a little early, maybe depart a little late, or one of the two, you're gonna be able to save. Because there's those peak, you know, travel dates on the front end and back end of both of those holidays, the flights are super expensive. So that flexibility, if you can even shift your day one or two and I know there's a lot of people that work remotely now yeah highly recommend that if you can I'm doing some travel and I noticed there now this is just this anecdotal example but we noticed we uh, we were gonna leave on Christmas and then it was cheaper for us to leave on Christmas than to leave that day before oh yeah I was like oh I'll travel on I don't care ho 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 give me to the airport I don't care but yeah <laughs> so it is a matter of just taking the time to look around right you know hop on Google flights you know the tool we always talk about always. using and just tinker with those days you know move one one day another day that is as simple as it sounds that's really the key it is and it does take some time but it is worth it I found about a four hundred dollar savings mm -hmm. uh, just by flying on Christmas instead of the day before um, Europe. Flights to your domestically flights are still expensive. What are flights to Europe like right now? Yeah, Europe flights are crazy cheap. No matter where you live in the United States, even if you're, you're like a tiny little airport like Bemidji, Minnesota. I mean, like you can find flight deals to Europe right now in the 400s, 500s. Normally, I mean, they could be, you know, 800, 900 dollars or more. And we're talking about most of Europe, like even London, which usually is very expensive to find flights. Um, you know, if you're willing to go this winter kind of through March. You know, especially that January, February, which is a little bit of lower season, you can find cheap flights. Why? It's just kind of some seasonality, and there's all this like X factor of the airlines probably have too many flights right now, and mm -hmm. there's not enough demand. The airlines really struggle with targeting that demand and where it's at. And is that why? Because maybe I'm wrong, but I to fly domestically some somewhat. It's still really expensive. Las Vegas. Is it you, you? You spend money in Vegas. It's going to cost you a lot to get to Vegas. Yeah. Is it? Is, do we see any end in sight in these? really high domestic flights? You know, if you can, again, be flexible on when you're gonna travel, I mean, there are cheap domestic flights. I mean, we're finding them every day at Thrifty Traveler. I mean, this is what we do as a company. Absolutely. So we are seeing cheaper flights, and there actually is too much capacity in, for domestic flights right now. So we are seeing flight prices dropping, especially, again, through kind of that March time frame. Oh, okay, that's good news. That's yeah. good news, because Chicago, it used to be like $200, and now I, I can't get on a flight without $400. And I call that the eat one peanut and land flight. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, I up, know. eat a peanut, land. What the hell are you charging me for? Anyway, you guys have a, now this is, you guys are going to love this. You have a new article out on thriftytraveler.com about the best days to book a flight. Because there is that legend, the old wives tale, it used to be, buy, book on Tuesday. Give me, I want people to read the article, but give me some highlights. What, do you, what are you guys talking about here? Yeah, yeah. So the most important thing is not when you actually book the flight. Um, you know, you always want to avoid, you know, we say book at least 45 to 60 days before you're going to fly. 
but it doesn't matter what day of the week you book. It's more important when your butt's actually in that seat. So what days of the week are you actually flying on? So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturdays for departures and returns, that's gonna be that sweet spot of where you can find those cheapest flights. So it's no longer about when you actually purchase the ticket. You, it's about when your butt yeah. is sitting eating that tiny sun chip. The very, very, that tiny little that bag. Little bag it's of Fallon so sun small. chips. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it is two components. I mean, you need a book out. You don't want to be booking last minute ever, you know, your flights, because um, that's when you're going to get charged a lot. But yeah, if you can, so, th you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday is just when fewer people are flying. And that's why there's cheaper flights. It, that's as simple as it is. So avoid Fridays, avoid Mondays, avoid Sundays, and you're going to save. A lot of money. Okay, now we're going to talk Delta. His take. <laughs> I know we rarely talk about Delta on this show, but uh, we're going to talk his reaction to the changes Delta made uh, after the backlash on their loyalty program, Sky Miles, plus deals and more. More with Jared right after this. Back in a moment. Okay, uh, here's the topic at hand. You're smiling. You know what I'm going to talk about. First of all, did you see our Halloween show? I did. Um, we were scary things from airlines uh, for our theme. <laughs> Fallon was that tiny bag of sun chips. Uh, Eric, photographer Eric, was the passenger that decides to take their shoes off. The true monster. And then I was a airline loyalty card with absolutely no perks. <laughs> uh, that was me. Yeah, which half our audience did not understand. No. But that's all right. Okay. <laughs> For people that, uh, that this doesn't matter much to, just to recap, Delta announced mass changes to their loyalty program. Hysteria ensued, backlash ensued, people were writing Mr. Ed, the CEO, mm -hmm. I was making fun of him, uh, and then they went into a meeting, came out, and made changes, and I put the word changes in air quotes. Talk to me, your reaction to the changes. You know, they made some pretty minor changes. They made it seem like consumers had a win, we'd call it. More quotes, air quotes. Um, but, I mean, at the end of the day, these are still, like, huge changes. Um, and I, for most people out there, I think the most important thing is, is just stop chasing airline status. Because it's like an abusive relationship that I have with Delta. Yeah. It's like, I want you really bad. And they're like, no, we don't really, no, nah, I'm not really interested. And I'm like, oh, come on. Because, yeah, do you want to be with me? <laughs> do you want to yeah. be with me? Please like me. Anyway, but to, I want to be fair to Delta. Because yeah. I have spent, people were like, oh, you're being really mean. I'm not being mean. I'm just calling balls and strikes. Because I've been really, I, I, when they're great, you and I have sat here for eight seasons and have celebrated them of how they went through the pandemic. But when they mess up, I, 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 you got to call them out. Uh, do you think... Do you think this is going to have any long-lasting damage to them? What I mean by that is people always say, you know, we'll get emails sometimes. Oh, you did this. I'm never watching again. And then Monday they're watching. Um, <laughs> do you really think all of us like me and you that, you know, we're like angry villagers, right. but we still book that, we still book that Delta flight. Mm -hmm. Is this going to have long-term damage to them? I think there was some, you know, short-term repercussions where like some brand damage, but think about how much press Delta got. Everyone was talking about it. Was, Every, I wore their credit card! <laughs> <laughs> I think people have very short memories, and at the end of the day, you and I, loyal Delta Flyers, like so many other people, are, we're going to continue to fly, because it's the best option a lot of us have, depending on where you live in the U.S. And again, I said to be fair, they did have a problem. You and I just talked yeah. about They did have a problem they needed to solve. There were too many people in their clubs. And if everybody is special, nobody is special. And that's hard to hear for, it's hard to hear for people that, that pay those exorbitant fees, but there were too many people and they couldn't service them. Yep. So they needed to correct that. They had to. They had to. Yeah. Maybe not the way they did it, Mr. Ed, but anyway. It and still hurts. It still hurts. <laughs> but other airlines are twisting their mustache, oh, yeah. waiting to, like, Amer well, what's American? American is coming after Delta. Yeah, American, Alaska. I mean, they're, like, salivating. They're like, oh, my God, there's all these angry 
Delta people who spend a lot of money with the airline come to American, come to Alaska Airlines, fly with us, try out, you know, take your loyalty status, we'll match it, you know, come hang out with us for a while, hopefully we can get your business. I mean, we see this all the time, whether it's hotels or airlines, they want you to jump ship. They do. And if there were a lot of flights out of here, I would. Okay, we always have deals when Jared's here. Uh, what deals do we have? Yes, we got some from Minneapolis, Chicago, Seattle, Orlando. All right, some of the top ones right now. Minneapolis to London, nonstop round trip on Delta through May for $571. That's an amazing That's deal. That's crazy. <laughs> crazy. And some of these included like Christmas, New Year's. Like I was talking about, there's like a very strange thing happening with flight deals currently where there's a lot more deals than you normally see. So again, that was nonstop. Uh, Minneapolis to Miami, again, nonstop round trip on Delta, $177 through February. Again, you can hop on Google Flights, check out these deals, book them. Chicago, new route to Tulum, Mexico, which is just south of Chicago, $357 on Delta. Out of new, Chicago. Brand new airport, brand new route, very exciting. Um, April through May, August through September. Seattle to Rome, Italy, $452 on American Airlines through February. Again, normally like $800. Um, Orlando to Aruba. 381 on American Airlines through May. So, but these deals, I mean, they're. Those are all, no matter what city you're watching us from, yeah. those are great. Yeah. You are too. Thank you, buddy. Jared, everybody. By the way, you mean, we're giving you our costume to give to the Thrifty Traveler team. <laughs> For the latest flight deals and news, head to thriftytraveler.com. Photographer Eric takes home a creepy bear when we return. Back after this. Well, last week we saw what happened when our beloved photographer Eric brought home haunted dolls for a sleepover. Weird things happened, but there was an extra doll that may have scared his family even more. Some of you might have seen the haunted doll piece that I did for the Jason show. Brought a sack full of haunted dolls back to my house um, to see what would happen. And to my surprise, my family wasn't that freaked out about them, but they were freaked out about one doll I brought home. The only thing freaking me out is the life-size bear in there, because every time I turn the corner, it looks like a real person sitting there, and then I look at its face, and it's like a giant teddy bear. It was the teddy bear bear pillow that I got Jason for Christmas. What the hell is this? <laughs> Is this that body pillow with the bear head? I figure I get these haunted dolls here, but the Jason show has its own doll. Eh? Yeah. I figure that he could take on all these dolls and still win. The story of this, oh my God. During the filming of the haunted doll piece, my wife not only found out about the existence of the body bear pillow. She also found out that I was the one that uh, might have spent the money to buy it. What in the hell? What is even happening here? I just my pants, seriously. It's here for protection. To protect it because everybody at your work doesn't want it? You had to protect it from being thrown away? No. You sent it home with me to keep me safe. What are you talking about? I'll, I'll mic you up and we'll talk about it later. I can't wait. What is, is that thing in there though? Why is that in there? It's for protection. It's going to protect me from the dolls. It's like an even bigger doll. It's so weird. Here it is, no! Melissa. Okay, no. It's a Bulgarian love pillow for like holding and making you feel safe. Does it work? I don't know. Jason never brought it home. It was his Christmas present. From who? Who gave it to me? No comment. You, well, you did that? Oh, my God. Of course you did. How much of my money did you spend on that? Well, it was only like $200, but it cost another $200 to ship. Because I had to get somebody to ride it on the train with it. But it's wearing my clothes. America shirt is yours? <laughs> Wait, those are the 
the shorts you wore that one time to the Teddy thing. Pillow was wearing underwear. <laughs> oh God, and they're dirty. So he's got like brown stained like underwear. Why would you under say there. that? Wait, you, they were yours. Yeah, they were mine. What? I don't need. We don't need those details. But it's not like my brown stains. It's like stain stained brown. Okay, Eric. <laughs> no one believes that. I'm not a pooper. Okay, so let me get this straight. You brought home the Bulgarian love bear mm -hmm. because you think it's going to fight the haunted dolls. Yep. I figure I'll also sleep with my ex. Okay, that's an absolutely not. No. I can't sleep with the axe? No, you can't have the axe down there. It's a bear? Well, it has a bear head. Oh, I didn't pay attention. I didn't see that. Did you not like examine it when you saw it? You didn't like. No, I just got in the car and was like, okay. So you, were, you just didn't like question the bear when it was in there? Mm -mm. Any other uh, thoughts for the test note? I got chips. Nice. Because it's that. It has weird stuff. Like, this is crazy. I don't understand why I don't also get paid from the Jason show because the shit I have to put up with sometimes is a lot. <laughs> if I die tonight, that can be the kid's new daddy. If you die tonight, I'm the one that's going to need a new daddy, not them. <laughs> Do they have to use your last name on the show anymore? No, they just say I'm Tanya Sturm's <laughs> husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. Here's the bear, everybody. Wow. Here's the Bulgarian love bear. The Bulgarian love bear. Why is his head so misproportioned? I, to I the... don't. You're asking questions about an irrational purchase. <laughs> I don't know. I, I. That is really Eric's wife, Tanya, who I do think we should cut her a check yes, uh, for yeah. all the things that yeah. she has to put up with. Yeah. I love her quote. How much of my money did you spend? <laughs> yeah. Eric, we do a uh, we do a tradition here for all of you new folks to us. We do a tradition where Eric buys the entire staff weird presents, <laughs> but we okay. never tell Tanya how much he spends <laughs> on those gifts. So yeah, Tanya's not watching. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, yeah. She's only watched the show what Eric three times in nine years. One. One. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. <laughs> It is time, my friends, for the world's shortest segment. <laughs> Top coffee chains are ready for the holiday season. Starbucks launched its holiday menu today featuring four new cup designs. There they are right there. One new drink is the gingerbread oat milk chai, available iced and hot. Popular drinks from previous years are also back. Caribou uh, here locally launched new holiday items. New drinks include the Ho Ho Mint Mocha Espresso <laughs> Shaker and the Villa uh, Vanilla Oat Nog Latte. And Dunkin' Donuts, not to be outdone. Their new drinks, the Spice Iced cookie coffee. Oh. It's a new take on coffee and cookies, and that is also available iced and hot. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. None of those sound good. We're wrapping things up. Oh, by the way. Uh, Fallon and I would both like to let you know that her shirt is not see-through. Just FYI, yeah. Well, I mean, a little bit. That's fine. Kids, go in the other room. Uh, it's time for the surprise goodbye. <laughs> uh, was Fallon naked on the show today? I can just see. Anyway, if you thought solving a Rubik's Cube was hard enough, try doing it like this. A teenager in Australia just sent a Guinness record for the fastest time solving a Rubik's Cube while skydiving. <laughs> okay. He solved the Rubik's Cube in just over 28 seconds while in free fall. It took him five tries to set the record, saying it's harder to concentrate with extreme wind blowing you around. <laughs> I mean, wow. imagine yeah. that. Have you gone skydiving before? No, and I can't do a Rubik's Cube on the ground. Same. You know what Same. I mean? I, I, I have gone skydiving. You have? Yeah, but I've never done the Rubik's Cube. You, 
I can't believe you really. I have video. Yeah. Bring it in. Bring it yeah. in, please. It really brings out the Miss Piggy in my nose. The wind, <laughs> the wind lifting her up. I'm like, well, let her go. Can't do anything about it. Were you, were you, did you? I did like, tandem and I did, thank God, because I didn't pull the string. I was supposed to. Oh my, okay. <laughs> Bring that video in. Tomorrow, <laughs> Stephanie Hansen is back with her review of U2 Inside the Sphere in Vegas. Plus three actors from Mall Rats. A reunion will be live in our studio. <laughs> That's tomorrow. Right now, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody.